welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is episode 19, uh, where I'm going to put the control sticks in, the grips, and almost finish up with the push-pull tube uh, assembly. Um, in this section of the build, there's a new skill set introduced. You've got to do some wire soldering in this control grip. Uh, I haven't wire soldered before. I have soldered plumbing, household plumbing, so some of the concepts are the same. Uh, but there's definitely some unique characteristics to wire soldering. Uh, I did decide to do it myself and move forward. Uh, my son does a lot of soldering on projects that he works on, and I was going to have him do it. Uh, but I moved forward with my novice uh, beginner skill set, assuming that if I get a failure in one of the wires, it's not going to be catastrophic. Uh, it's trim control for the most part, or push to talk. Um, and I can get I can get at these wires again to resolder. So I, I, I moved forward with doing it myself. It wasn't that hard. I'm not 100% sure my solders are perfect. Uh, they're not as smooth as some of the others, which tells me about temperature. But they held pretty tight, and I moved forward with it. Um, and remember, none of my videos are instructional videos. Clearly, not the section on soldering. Uh, so this is just documenting what I'm doing. Um, an engine update, uh, Steve from Clear Direct uh, just got his engine, which is good news. He's a few months ahead of me on the purchase date, and he said it took him 23 months to get his Titan IO340. If I use that formula, knowing I'm a few months behind, and when I ordered my Titan, uh, I should get it March, April, which given where I am in my build, that's probably going to be pretty good timing. So um, even though I waited and Steve waited about 23 months, my understanding is the wait times are going down as Continental and Titan's catching up on their backlogs. Um, with that, uh, let's start building the plane. I'm going to put the control assembly together, control sticks. It's page 112 of the text manual. They do give you some figures to go by. Then you've got the parts list, parts diagram. Uh, it's marked fuselage, but all the parts are in the finishing kit. I made the silly mistake of spending time looking through my fuselage parts, but in fact they're finishing kit parts. And there's just a collection of parts. Your control sticks are in bags. And I think you just follow the diagram and start putting it together. I've completed putting together the first section of the control stick and the link tube. Here's my control stick. This is the link tube here. These are obviously the control sticks. It's a bunch of washers and pulleys and some greasing and some fittings, some bushings, some aluminum stock bushings that you've got to cut. And they all go together fairly simple. Remember to keep your left and right. This is obviously your left because this is going forward. As I get, have it laying on the table with the bend this way, this is my left. So you've got to be careful of this tube. It does not. It goes on only one way. Um, a couple little gotchas. If you look at this drawing and you zoom it up, it tells you to drill out the lower hole to a quarter. Let me see if I can get it in here. But they're showing the attachment on the upper hole, which doesn't make sense because the upper hole is not a quarter, and this is a quarter-inch bolt. But it does say to refer to figure 05. And it does show that it's on the lower hole on both of those. So I would, you know, again, if you study these things too carefully, you wonder if there's a mistake. I, I think that's a small mistake. Um, but it, it looks like it goes into that bottom hole. Uh, the other thing is to make sure that these uh, control sticks are parallel. That all determines on how far you're going to screw it into here. You do use locked, uh, Loctite blue and a nut here. I just measured across the bottom and then across the top to make sure they're the same. I adjusted them until they were parallel, and then I measured the turns on here. you got to go at least 10 turns, but actually I was more like 15 to 20 to get this thing, to get these two parallel. Um, but that's that step, and we'll move on from there. Uh, the next thing I did is after putting these stops on uh, for the uh, I guess there'll be aileron stops each way. I did install the assembly into the floorboard and it says when you finish with the floorboard installation. I'm assuming I don't need to take it up for any other reason. So I've got my floorboard or what I think is my permanent installation. Uh, these are put in with uh, four uh, bolts with washers on top and they recommend a washer on the bottom also and then a little machine oil under here under the collar. Uh, to assure free movement. So I've got 
what I consider free movement. It's not restricted at all. And it's bolted down pretty tight into these floorboards. So we'll move on. I think the next step they talk about putting the, uh, I'm not doing the optional uh, right seat controls. So I put the cap and the grip on here. And then I think we're going to install the, uh, the controls and run the wires down the tube uh, for the control stick. I'm going to start the wiring of the pilot side control grip. Uh, Rand sent the Ray Allen grip. It's the 205, which is this one. It does not have the extra terminals. Um, this apparently comes apart, and you've got switches inside that you're going to hook wiring up to. And this is everything that came in the package. If you're only wiring one grip uh, and not the co-pilot side, there's a basic wiring diagram. I'm assuming these short wires are to run these, these connections. There is soldering involved, so make sure you've got a soldering iron and some solder. And they give you some more diagrams, and we'll get going from here. Well, soldering is another skill set I'm learning uh, for this. I can solder a, a water pipe, but that's different from electricity, obviously. Um, I did some research on it, and I found that I needed to use a 6040 or 6337 lead to tin solder with a rosin core base. Um, they say it's very workable. I used a soldering pencil that got to 340 degrees and had an LED um, temperature gauge on it so I knew it got hot. Touch to heat up the areas around the solder and try and then touch the solder to those areas to try and get it hot enough so it would meld. Um, they seem to be tight. I'm probably, I'm not professing that I am an expert at this at all. I then labeled all the wires uh, using dash marks with a Sharpie so I can put this back together and each, uh, each one, two, three, four, five, six dash marks would represent which wire. Um, and I'm gonna secure these so there's no single wire that gets a pull. And then I'm gonna test them on a 12 volt battery, basically just touching the ends or clamping the ends to my battery. There's one that's a power here, there's one that's a ground. Uh, then push the buttons and test each wire to make sure I'm getting 12 volts through there or whatever my battery puts out. So that's the process. I think I've got it, but I can't wait to see comments down below about uh, how this isn't the way it's supposed to be done, but we'll find out. Thanks. Okay, I've put my control stick switch back together and I think I've got it wired correctly. I've identified each of the wires with my own schematic. Each, I've got little stripes. I use Sharpies and then did the same thing at the other end. And I've got an old 12 volt battery in the garage that I've got. And I'm testing to make sure that as I push each button, the wire is getting me the proper current through there. A quick reminder, the push to talk button at the top does not have a power source to it. So that's completing a ground. Uh, which I'm assuming is going to be part of the radio hookup. So in testing for that, you just want to test, test continuity to make sure that when you close that ground, you're getting the continuity signal. So I finished testing. It all seems to work. So now I am going to run it uh, down my stick. I'm just going to snake a wire down there and then run those wires and, and get that installed. In snaking your wires through your control tube, uh, don't forget to get your grip and there's a plastic sleeve. This is the second one, which you don't use. You use one of two. Um, so you got to get those on first because if you snake your wires, you're not going to be able to get these on. Ask me how I know that. So this is now the second snaking of my wires with this already attached. Then there's a set screw that will go in here um, through the bottom of your, your switch into here into the pipe. Uh, some have been using 632 set screws. I saw someone else say they riveted it um, because getting the set screw through this and the metal core and then having it sit in there was a little bit difficult. So I may rivet it. He said easily to be drilled out later if necessary. So that's probably going to be my approach. Oh, and, and the reason I had the air gun in here with this uh, tip on it was sliding this foam on top of the plastic was really a bear. I just put the air tip under here and blasted some air and it slid right on. So that was a trick I learned from, uh, from one of the videos, but that seemed to get it right on there. Okay, I've installed the control stick uh, 
with this um, trim controls back into the plane I've got the wires coming out I've got them all marked temporarily with just masking tape I've got to improve the the labeling on that but right now they're sitting and they're back into the plane a quick observation I have bolted this control tube to the bottom hole here which is consistent with this picture here showing the control and clearly going into the bottom hole but as I come over to the text it says bolt the rod end, the male rod end, to the forward end of the push-pull push tube to the top hole in the control stick torque tube. So that seems to tell me the top hole. This seems to tell me the bottom hole. I'm going to leave it for now and see how the installation or what this top hole is for or what the bottom hole is for uh, in whatever the next connection is to see if I have to, to change that. Um, not 100% sure and I haven't seen other builders comment on it. So I'm going to leave it for now and see what happens as I continue. I seem to have found my answer to that question. This is the re rudder return system. Um, and it says rudder return system attaches to lower hole. So I am going to, thank goodness, the, I don't have to do anything with the Loctite because this is all set in. So I just have to move this up. That, that should go pretty quick. Uh, the uh, next thing I'm going to work on is the elevator push-pull tube. Uh, it, this is this uh, this long tube that goes all the way down through the tail of the um, fuselage and connects to the push-pull tube that we've already installed here. Uh, you do get some hardware out. But one thing to caution is some of the hardware is in the finishing kit and some of the hardware is in the fuselage kit. So you got to dig around and find your parts from the appropriate place and set them out and the text for this is on page 115. In the forward end of the tube you put the doubler in you match drill the holes to a number 30 and the forward hole you uh, drill out to a one quarter. This is the forward end of the tube and on the aft end of the tube you have this fitting that goes in and this hole has to align perfectly with the hole which you can't see the Clico down there very well but this line has to be perfectly in line with the Clico at the other end so I ended up using a kind of a, a metal bar to put in here and to tap it to get it to turn because once you get this in it's kind of tough to turn it so I used the bar and, and got it lined up using the bolt coming through as my line, side of line uh, to the other end. Then you uh, rivet them. You're going to rivet these four around the outside with stainless steel rivets and the same with the doubler up front with other stainless steels. I think these are stainless steel 42s and the one in the aft are um, 43s. I uh, took the push-pull tube out of the plane, that 35-inch tube, and I trial fit it inside the doubler and the bushing and put the bolt through. Uh, one of the other builders had commented that it was came too fat to fit in there, so I didn't want to install the push-pull tube all the way in and try and connect it and then realize it wasn't going to fit. So I did test fit it. Mine went right in without any adjustment. Matter of fact, there's even a little bit of play. Um, Almost like I could put a washer or two on the inside, but it doesn't call for it. So I guess a little bit of play is okay. So I'll put this tube back in, and then I've got to run this tube up the fuselage from the rear. And this might be the time that I start rearranging my workshop garage. This table, I think it's 12 feet long. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off about four feet of it, reset the legs, move or out of the way those four feet so I can swing the tail around and uh, give myself a little more room for working the tail feathers and also as you can see I don't have much room for the engine mount up here which is about you know going to come up pretty soon so I've got to get the plain kitty corner in my garage so I'm about to the point where I'm going to have to chop this table up and um, and make some more room for the plane uh, rather than cutting the table right now I decided to pull the plane out of the garage 
and run that push-pull tube uh, from the aft side um, and then pull the plane back into the garage and it comes in the back and then I don't know if I've got enough light in here no nope, not enough light but it comes up through the holes it's pretty self-explanatory um, when you look at it well this is probably a pretty good place to end the video um, uh, this one went pretty smooth no no real difficulties lots of parts and pieces just putting them together a little bit of new skill set on that soldering but I thought that went okay uh, this episode of this section of the build took me 20.9 hours, which brings my project to date to 700.7 hours. Um, and 700 hours is actually an interesting uh, time frame. Uh, when I first bought the kit, Rands had indicated in their material that the build time would be 500 hours. I added 40% to that because I was a first time builder and came up with 700 hours is what I expected my completion time to be. Um, I'm estimating that I'm maybe halfway, maybe a little further than halfway, and my new completion hours is probably about 1,300. I am following some other builders on the EAA Builders Log, and if you haven't followed that, those are excellent uh, sources of information for other people's build. And there's a, a 21 builder who just finished his plane a little bit ago, and he had built an RV6, I think, previously. So this was his second build, and he completed his EAA log at around 1,300 hours. So um, uh, I'm not making judgment, but if you're planning uh, what you want to do with your build, I, I was thinking Oshkosh this summer was a, was a possibility, but it's, it's most likely not. Um, um, you know, just take, uh, that's where I am and your mileage may vary, but, uh, the journey is what's important. I'm loving every minute of it. So remember, dream it, just build it.